We move down to the last part in this program. Welcome back. Our last story is something that's going to take us right out of this world. Wall E is a computer animated science fiction film produced by Pixar Animation Studios. It follows the story of a robot named Wall E who's designed to clean up a polluted earth in our future. The fictional story gives a deep rooted message. If we don't clean up our act in space or right here on earth, our planet will turn into hell one day. Humans have abandoned Earth, and they have left behind a gigantic waste dump. These scenes are of a distant, fictional future, but have their inspiration in real life. The first such mishap in space. A privately owned U.S. communications satellite, owned by Iridium, collided with a defunct Russian military satellite. The two satellites were traveling at about 10 kilometers a second. A prominent Russian space expert suggested NASA fell down on the job by not warning of the collision. But U.S. space experts say no one could have predicted it. There are so many objects in Earth orbit, and they're all flying in intersecting orbits, that eventually this had to happen. The crash generated two large debris clouds, which will spread over time, forming a shell around Earth. Later, the pieces of Hundreds of fragments will pose an additional hazard to other satellites or spacecraft that move through the area. This has brought new pressure to outer space traffic. More than 50 years ago, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik, the world's first satellite. It touched off an international space race for the cosmos. Two, we have main engine start. Zero. Since that time, more than 4,000 satellites have been launched. With so much traffic, is it any wonder that a little trash has been left behind? During half of the century of space exploration, the near space has been filled with immense amounts of space debris. At the moment, there are up to 18 or 20,000 objects of various sorts there. It comes from Earth, but is now going nowhere. The debris all travels at about 15,000 miles per hour, and the amount is building. In 1978, Russia's Cosmos 954 satellite crashed into northwest Canada, littering the area with thousands of pieces of radioactive debris. In 1996, a piece of space junk cut the antenna on France's Cirrus military reconnaissance satellite. And the latest satellite collision added more than 500 bits of debris to the thousands orbiting Earth. There have been internationally agreed um, uh, mitigation measures to reduce the amount of space debris and control to control the further growth of space debris. And the most efficient measures turn out to be um, to remove mass from densely populated orbit uh, altitudes. But analysts say those measures are hard to carry out without a global air traffic control system. Last February, the U.S. used a missile from a Navy warship to blow apart a tank of toxic fuel on a defective U.S. spy satellite. Analysts believe the U.S. was testing anti-satellite weapons. The result was more debris. I'll, I'll walk you through a little bit of what we think. We're As seeing. the leading space powers develop new ways to destroy orbiting objects, have they become space litter bugs? There's absolutely no reason for any nation to be withholding data due to its own national interest, and the space weaponization should especially be banned. In outer space, spacecraft and their space race are barely regulated. At most, they are separately monitored by individuals individual countries whose data are rarely shared. If we don't all share the best data we have, we're going to have more collisions. Another Chinese analyst looks at the problem in a broader view. This, is, this particularly you know, has to do with this uh, concept of global governance. This collision highlights the intensity 
of human interactions and activities globally, internationally, and also highlights the increase of the scale and scope of the uh, uh, every the activities each and every country now. As concern over space debris rises, deterioration is also affecting some regions on Earth. Scientists warn if the polar ice cap continues to shrink, Arctic summers could become ice-free by the end of the century. But global warming seems to have world leaders more interested in the region's resources. Melting ice makes any oil and gas there easier to access. Claiming territory, exploiting gas fields, deploying submarines, and testing missiles. The so-called White Desert is now seen as white dessert. Experts say the increasing human activities make the Arctic an arena similar to outer space. It's, uh, it has to do with how you know, all the countries to deal with the public affairs, including public space, including the outer space for the, for the human beings. Therefore, for the oceans, for the Antarctic, our Arctic, you know, for all all these spaces, also for, for also for the global environment, this public space and public affairs they provide the public goods for every country, for every human beings. Therefore, you face a problem of a free rider problem, and when it comes to take actions, the spending for the cost of dealing with these kind of issues, it faces an issue of you know, we, we call it the tragedy of the commons or prisoner's dilemma. But the, the problem is, if nobody is going to take the action, or if not the majority of the countries will take action all for the public goods, and everyone is going to suffer. Necessity and curiosity will keep humans exploring and exploiting on Earth and in outer space. But unless each country focuses slowly on global good as well as national interest, it may be impossible to avoid a deadly collision. So what can we say in closing? Now in the face of all kinds of global challenges, maybe the best solution is for countries to work together. Experts on space debris met this week in Vienna at a UN seminar to discuss better ways to prevent more crashes, but reaching consensus isn't easy. We need a vision, though, for the long-term future. And speaking of the future, we come to the end of this program, but of course we'll see you again at the same time next week. As always, if you've got any comments, suggestions or feedback on what you've seen so far in this program, send it to us at worldinsight at cctv.com. I'm James Chow for me and the team here in Beijing. Thanks for watching and bye for now.